Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, lovely people. Uh, apologies for the for the lateness. Um, it took me 25 minutes to sort that out. My my computer wasn't um, behaving properly, but here we are now. So uh, welcome. Welcome to your Yoga Solutions live broadcast with me, Mark J. Aquaviva, uh, bringing you solutions for your practice on, on a weekly basis. Um, uh, yes, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are on this lovely uh, spring morning, Tuesday the 26th of April 2022. Um, yeah, let's get to the content. I've had a question from the lovely Mandy. Uh, she says, yes, please. When I, I asked if anyone had any questions. Um, she said, I, I still tend to hang off my groin, okay, uh, especially my left side. Problems with the left knee also, okay. Um, how can I do poses like Malasana and Happy Baby Malasana? Uh, oh, um, that's squat, isn't it? Yeah. So um, I think... I, I think it's spelt Malasna, but it doesn't matter um, as long as we know what we're talking about. Mal if I'm right, it's um, you're talking about squat and happy baby. So how can I do poses like squat and happy baby without feeling that pulling in the groins? Thanks, Mark. Really enjoyed Saturday's workshop too. Oh, it was lovely having you there, Mandy. It's nice having you on screen as well. Okay, um, groins. Groins and what was the question? How, how, how can I do these postures without feeling that pulling in my groins? Okay, well, uh, the groins aren't being pulled by the posture. They're, they're, they are doing the job of supporting you at the moment. Um, I suppose you could argue there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, obviously the body's complaining about it. So... Ah, question is why? Well, it's because you need support, especially if you're doing things like squat and um, that sort of thing. But um, you see, you see, the problem is the way, the way most of us do postures is we see the shape, we make the shape, and then we come, we feel restricted in that. Now, why would that be? And the the, the answer uh, the answer is let me let me just put these on so I can talk about it. Um, that camera's a bit dark, isn't it? Let's brighten it up. Uh, one second. Be within a tick. There you go. Um, yeah. So uh, the 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 problem the problem is uh, people do a posture. So uh, if my last is squat, you squat, and in doing so, uh, you have to catch your weight. You catch your weight with your knees. You catch your weight with the uh, with the muscles around the buttocks or if you do it with an arched back, you'll catch, catch the weight with your lower back and your groins, right? And, um, and whilst you're being supported by those things, um, you can't move. <laughs> because in order to move, you need to let go of the th stuff that's holding you up. You see what I mean? So, it's, um, so we end up restricted. And then we, we get strong at holding ourselves up and, and then lower, uh, maybe lower ourselves a bit further. So it's an even harder job by letting go for a moment, dropping a bit further and then catching the weight again. And um, yeah, it's, it's all very dysfunctional because it, it, uh, those pulls on the structure, pulls on the joints and pulls on the spine uh, lead to problems. Uh, and it's not, it's not what we want to do. So... Um, how do we how do we solve that? Well, let, uh, let's just put it back to uh, the speaking camera. Um, <clears throat> the way to solve it is to you need to find support in the thing that you're wanting to do, and you need to find support that doesn't block you from movement. And the the groins are obviously involved in blocking you from movement. My guess is your um, back arches a bit, so your lower back is pulling on your weight. And that sort of goes with the groins pulling tight. And actually, if you pull your pelvis forwards, then it just makes it harder for your knees. And, um, and still the groins will be tight. So, um, so what, what's the solution? <clears throat> well, well, let's approach. Um, I've got this set up here where you can sort of see close up of my legs. 
Yeah, and see me do the posture. That's great. So, let's uh, angle that up a bit. There we go. We should do it. No, that doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, start, start like this. Let, let's take away the problem of carrying your weight with your back and your groins. So I'm just going to tie my top up so you can see what goes on in the middle because that's that's the answer. Excuse me. I put on so much weight. <laughs> uh, Abigail cooks too well. But, it, it, you know, being heavier doesn't actually make your uh, core any less effective. It's just that it might be, um, you might be more prone to carrying your weight with your back, so, which is why people's bellies hang out. Um, mine does too, and I'm hanging off my back. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the way to take the job out of the inappropriate areas for support is to lean your weight. You have to be quite strong in your hands to hold onto your thighs just above the knees. And you lean your weight, your body weight, through your arms into your legs. And that weight should allow you to be relaxed in your knees because the, you're sort of basically supporting the top, the, the tops of the thighs back by leaning your weight into it. Um, and with that, you can let go of any holding around the pelvis. You know, you can let go of any of that and let, let yourself sort of hang out a bit uh, to feel what it's like to let go of your groins. Now your back will arch if you hang out and I suggest that you draw your navel back at the same time to make it okay for your spine. If, you're, if the weight of the organs hangs forwards then it will pull, pull on the spine and make it a bit awkward. So you're leaning firmly through your arms as if you're leaning on a table and you're completely relaxing your legs and your back. The other thing that you're working is uh, apart from your arms is your your core to make a bit of space in there so that it's okay if you're back to arch all right now that that will give you the experience of not carrying your weight with your legs and not holding your weight with your groins and um, that sort of thing but what we need to do is get the weight which is in your core from behind the navel here here um, to sort of organize things so that you can land your internal weight on your heels. So to do that, just drift very slightly forward so you don't fall over. And um, with the navel drawn back, breathe as if you're causing the breath to sort of bear down through your feet. So what you'll feel is your chest, your ribs, and your core are working as you breathe. You need to relax your pelvic floor, otherwise it doesn't work. So it's, uh, it's a bit weird. It's like um, holding your breath and bearing down to have a fart. <laughs> uh, so if you, if you manage to do that with the inhale, um, when you release the breath, your weight can land on your feet and your legs will catch your weight and there'll be some effort around the knees. But um, there'll be a sense of internal support and space at the front. Uh, between your legs and your um, uh, pelvis, uh, between your legs and your uh, belly. Okay, so um, the the th the reason I have got a close up of my feet is so you can see how I'm playing with it. So try it again. Relax your groins because you can. Relax your knees because you can. But wake up your feet so that you can take the weight forwards without falling over. And without gripping the ground. Uh, it's not wrong but um, you need to be able to continue to relax and you need to be supported. And the toes sort of growing out from the feet without the heels there makes your feet strong. Okay. Now um, you don't have to come as far forwards as I'm going but I'm, I'm just sort of illustrating, um, exaggerating to illustrate the thing. Same deal, the core has to come back so that you can relate the breath to the heels as if you're dropping the arriving breath into the space underneath the heels. And the result of that will be your, your ribs and your core will work as you breathe. When you release the breath, you can release the breath inside of yourself and drop your heels away from inside of yourself. 
so that the released breath sort of lands with the feet. And because your ribs and core were involved in finding the heels in the first place, you'll be in a situation where you're supported, the spine is supported, it won't have to hold you up from the release of the breath. Obviously the next inhale will have to arrive on your feet. If you want to keep that feeling of spaciousness in your groins as you squat. The other part of the equation is how the legs support you. Now that last one, you would have found a nice sense of spaciousness in here, but your knees will still catch the weight. So what you need to do, same thing, set it up. Take the weight off the spine, give it through your arms, reorganize the core, take a breath to the heels. A sense of bearing down from above as you breathe. And then when you release the breath, you can release the heels down away from you with it. When they touch, with the feet active, you work as if widening the space between the legs. So that, and that will cause the outside of the hips to sort of uh, come into you. The, the widening action of the legs without separating, you need to use the touch, will give you a sense of support on the outside of the pelvis. So the inside of the groins don't have to catch your weight. So set it up, space in the core, relaxation in the spine and groins. Take a breath with a sense of bearing, getting the breath down to the heels. Release the breath down with the heels. And as you touch, you widen and that should give you a sense of support from the outside and the knees won't be catching your weight because you're not giving the weight to the knees, you're giving it to the feet. And the legs are responding to support you through the hips, so you should be able to change position, provided that the arriving breath can uh, arrive on the feet and the release of the breath can arrive on the feet with the legs supporting you appropriately. Okay. I should leave you um, free to move towards squat without the knees, hips and lower back resisting movement. Okay, so it's a lot of work for muscles that you might have dif difficulty accessing, but those muscles only work if you decide to support yourself in a particular way through the breath and using the limbs uh, not by bracing around the joints to catch your weight, but using your limbs to support you from the ground. Okay, so that's that, that's that one. Um, I, th I think it's malasana because uh, the word mal, I, I might be completely wrong about this, um, so feel free to shoot me down if I am wrong. Um, I think another, another name for that posture is difficult pose. Yeah? Um, and I, I think that's what it means. Awkward pose or something. But yeah, squat. Oh, I enjoyed that. Um, yes, it might feel like uh, a ridiculous amount of effort, particularly, I, I know it's, I'm just talking about the breath, but particularly getting a breath that isn't about you lifting away from the ground with your spine but a breath that is sourced in support, which happens when your uh, rib cage and core get involved with support whilst the diaphragm does the breathing. And that's that sort of intensity that you, you would have felt on the inside when you're trying to breathe in that way. But the advantage is the release of the breath is a release of the diaphragm and your entire core structure is then relating to the use of the feet. The way they, they, the widening from the feet gives you, instead of having to hold your, uh, around, sorry, around your hips to stop you from falling, um, the, the widening from the feet uses the bones to support inwards through the, through the pelvis. So you get a kind of suspended sense of support that doesn't require your groins, your knees, your hips, your lower back to carry your weight. This is, there's one basic problem in yoga and there's one fundamental solution. The problem is having to carry your weight with the spine and with joints. The solution is the breath 
and how it relates to support and how it relates to um, where you are in space. Get those things right and the release of the breath can give you an experience of releasing into support and movement. And that's the kind of holy grail of Scaravelli inspired yoga. So, oh yeah, there's two parts. What was the other one? Malasana and uh, squat and happy baby. Okay. Well, it's the same relationships, except um, you, you, you haven't really got the job of needing support from your legs. But uh, the likelihood is when you bring your feet towards you, you bring them towards you with the groins. And when you reach, you fill the internal space so, you, so that everything is shortened and uh, you haven't got space to move. So with Happy Baby, um, it's sort of similar setup. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, you could try this. Just just see what it what it feels like to pick up a leg. Now you won't notice using your groin because you do it all the time, which is why it complains when it when you make it overwork. Um, what? But if you just to see what happens when you pick up a leg. Right? And see if you can notice the grip that pulls on you and then you get stiff to uh, prevent it from, you know, doing stuff. So uh, a better way of doing it is working out how to relax the groins. And when you relax a groin, the pelvis itself drops back and wide. So if you let your knee drop out to the side with that, You'll have a, a lift in your back, which is considered illegal in many yoga circles. But if, like when you are squatting, you get involved with the breath from behind the navel, there's a gathering back feeling that can stay with you because you breathe. And the way that happens is because you use the ground to breathe. So the ground is underneath that pelvis, the ground is underneath your head, your shoulders. And if you press into the ground to breathe, the core will be strong as you breathe, because you breathe. And there'll be a sort of bearing down feeling by engaging with this artifice of um, breathing into the earth. When you release the breath within that, because you are supported, it's a release of tension on the inside. It's the diaphragm that releases. And in that moment is when you can decide to bring your foot towards you and catch hold of it. Now, if you, if you did that, and if it wasn't bringing your leg towards you, if it was bringing your foot towards you, your foot would have done something to express that, okay? So it becomes a whole body movement. You're essentially, by setting it up with the breath, from within you, you engage with the earth, so you can breathe from the earth. When you release the breath, that release of the diaphragm allows movement that uses the ground underneath you. It uses the ground underneath the pelvis. It uses the ground underneath the rest of you to bring that foot, which is also involved, <sighs> towards you. You grab hold of it. And then when you, when you grabbed hold of it, the thing you mustn't do is collapse into yourself. What you need to do is meet support. The, the hand that is holding the foot when it gets there the hand that holds the foot when it gets there is the thing that the foot wants to rest outwards into, which is an attitude of the foot. It's an attitude of the leg. You kind of want the leg to be resting away from you into the support. And if you can do that, then the groins won't be in the way because they won't be busy holding the leg towards you. So same with the other one. Find the ground from within. Take a breath from the ground. It includes the head, otherwise you're going to give yourself a neck ache. You know, it includes the shoulder, otherwise you'll be distorting yourself. Use the ground to breathe. And then when you release the breath within that, you can use the ground to move, provided the foot is involved. And then you won't be picking your weight up with your groins. You'll, you'll be uh, using the ground underneath you to sort of lever the leg up towards you, but provided that the foot has this attitude of coming towards you. If it doesn't, it becomes a dead weight that you have to lift.
which makes it just too difficult. So from the ground, you breathe. To the ground, you release as you release within. And you decide to move. When the hand catches the foot, the foot needs to rest outwards away from you into the hand, the whole, the leg, the whole limb. And if, if you've got both legs resting away from you, then that space is in the middle, you see? Space, there's an emptiness in the belly because you're not um, shortening to pick yourself up. You're not shortening to pick the legs up. There's a spaciousness in the belly and there's, there's a spaciousness between the legs and the belly. And if the legs are resting away from you, you can stay with that sense of spaciousness. And you get the added benefit of the legs resting away from you, slightly engaging away, away from you, um, gives you somewhere to rest your shoulders from. So you can hang your shoulders back and feel open in the chest and the throat as the chest falls away from your hands. Okay, so you've got this general sense of the ground behind you. Use it to breathe. Don't breathe on top of the ground by lifting. Use the ground to breathe and there'll be this sort of sense of core strength. When you release the breath, release within yourself, away from your hands and feet. Drop within yourself as you give your weight. But with that arriving on the ground, you can sort of then use the ground to grow your toes out into space. You can do it one at a time and it'll be the little toes that lead the movement. Otherwise you'll be using your knees and your groins to straighten the leg. The little toes and the ankles decide where your foot's going. And you do that following the release of the breath on the inside so that you've got the space to move the limbs from there. If the legs manage to straighten, then you, in the rather pleasant um, position, provided you didn't pull them straight with the knee muscles, if the legs are able to straighten away from you by relaxing into the space behind the legs, then you've got the rather pleasant circumstance of the weight of the legs falling in that direction, away from you, allows you to hang your shoulders from the feet and the ground can still be underneath you as you drop into the ground to breathe. Release into your centre as you allow your body to release outwards into space. Okay. So if, if you want your groins to, uh, that should have helped your knee as well. Because um, the, the knee will take the brunt if it's used to carrying weight and the knee carries weight when your feet don't do, don't respond. Um, so yeah, different way, different muscles, different muscles are used to straighten the legs. You won't be straightening the legs by pulling the knee tight. It'll be the um, stuff at the back, stuff at the sides on the outside. It won't be the groins on the inside, but it will be the core and the ribs. And the space on the inside that goes with the groins will be able to release the space along the front of the spine, basically, and be able to release with the diaphragm as you release the breath. Okay, so I hope that was um, useful, Mandy. Uh, <coughs> a lot of information. Uh, there, there was a whole body knowledge behind that um, exploration. Uh, feel free to book a one-to-one -one if you ever get it. Get, um, 30 quid or so. <laughs> I can do if I did half an hour with you directly. I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to get down to the nuts and bolts of it for you, uh, especially if it's a, you've got a sidedness going on. The, the trouble with sidedness is um, we we have the idea of symmetry. We understand that, but we we measure it through um, effort and sensation, obviously. Um, but if you have one side that is more active than another, one side that is more tense than another, then uh, opening up that tenser side will be harder work. Opening and using the other side, which is actually the answer to freeing up the tense side, will feel like an inordinate amount of work <laughs> to actually wake the thing up. Like I was talk talking to you about your feet. You know, uh, for your knees and your groins and hips to find space and relaxation. 
other things are going to have to work like crazy in your experience. They'll, they'll feel like they have to work unreasonably. Uh, if, because, you know, your knee, your knee, your left knee particularly, uh, probably you stand, you give more weight to your left foot, unless it's a distortion thing. Um, it, uh, they, they're used to doing the work, so you don't notice them doing the work. But waking up the core and the feet, you, you know, try and lift, try, just try and lift your little toe. You know, try and lift your little toe. Well, I can't even do that. But, you know, playing, waking up your ankles and your feet will f be an inordinate amount of effort to wake them up to the degree where the feet can actually support you. So you don't need to hold around your knees. So it's, um, the, the thing that confuses us is, is this idea of trying to relax. <laughs> and then we do something and it's not relaxing. And then in order to relax appropriately, which is around the joints and in the spine, uh, you're going to have to wake up stuff that doesn't want to do anything because it's not had to for many, many, many years. <laughs> do you see what I mean? So um, measuring it by how hard it is to do or how much effort is involved is a red herring. It's, it's confusing. The, the only way you can measure these things is really through the sensation of uh, letting go into the outcome leading to the thing that you want. And um, the secret is the breath. The breath is the answer. And um, it's becoming clearer and clearer that that's, the, that's true. What that actually means is getting broader and well, stronger and stronger in my awareness. Um, and it's hard, and it's, the breath is the hardest thing to change because the breath and the mind are the kind of the same thing. You know, the way you breathe is in a perfect reflection of how you think and feel about the world. So changing those things feels counterintuitive, feels unnatural, feels until what you're looking for isn't for it to feel how the personality wants it to feel, but what you're, until what you're looking for is first principle things like I want to feel supported by the breath. I want to be able to let go of the breath and continue to feel supported. And um, if you make that your um, uh, sort of baseline intent, all other things, all other changes and shifts in experience can be allowed. Do you see me? Okay, uh, that's enough. Uh, I don't want to confuse you all. Um, yeah, great. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you found some value and you think other people might benefit, uh, well, if you enjoyed it, just press the like button for me at least. And uh, if you think there's anyone out there that might benefit, then uh, feel free to share it around Facebook. I, I leave it up. Sometimes I leave them on the group, uh, but um, I usually transfer them across to my website for my uh, premium members. Um, you can be a, a premium member very cheap. And I've, I've currently got this um, sort of promotion thing on where you can experience any of my content for five pounds. All right. Sign up for five pounds. It's a one off payment and you get a week's access, access all areas, including courses and things. All right. Um, so a p part of it is to give you an opportunity to explore what my work involves. Right, and, and the, these courses are a couple hundred pounds each, so um, it's quite it's quite an opportunity. Um, yeah, so part, the intention behind it is to give access. Uh, if, if you're not sure whether it's worth uh, working with me or not, um, you get access all areas for one week. Also, if you're someone that just hasn't got the money, this is your opportunity to. Uh, you can only do this once uh, because it because it um, only allows one purchase per person. All right, you can only do this once, and it lasts one week. But you can pick a course um, that you like, and if you can do it every day for one week, you'll get through the course for five pounds. Two, uh, you know, a minimum two hundred pound course for five pounds. All right. For for those of you trying to, uh, I know there's a lot of yoga teachers out there with no money. So if you really want to get some benefit for, for dirt cheap, um, I'm, I've got this offer on at the moment where you can access all areas for one week. 
Um, what I ask is that, um, well, obviously with the courses, you don't you don't get the free one to ones that go with it. But um, um, yeah, what I ask is that you um, don't abuse the thing. You know, um, uh, use it to find out uh, whether you want to work with me or not. And uh, there's you can get access to all my courses, all workshops, all classes, uh, all yoga solutions that I've done over the last four years um, so much content out there there is the opportunity to download you must not share it with anyone else um, it was kind of cheeky if you download the thing <laughs> um, over the fight over the week but I will understand if if that's what you need to do um, but anyway yeah I, I, th I thought I thought I you know I want there might be people out there that haven't got money but want to experience working with me and just don't have the opportunity and I put off by the, the amount of money involved for five pounds you, you can give it a go and yeah and also means you can get hold of a workshop you want to do um, but uh, you know one of my Saturday workshops talking of which I, I've got another one this Saturday I, I try and do them every Saturday I uh, haven't got next month's up yet but uh, I'll do that soon um, Saturday mornings 10 30 to 1 it's always a nice intimate group and we can work on whatever you're interested in okay um yeah that'll do from me oh uh, and uh, yeah if you if you've got something specific going on you can always um do a free 15 minutes with me and i'll, I'll give you what i can in 15 minutes and um uh, many many times people have done that and i've given them exactly what they needed and i'm not needed to see them again okay um so you can book a free 15 minutes with me on the website uh at the link all right so yeah that'll do for me much love to you all see you same time same place next week bye now